broken and uh, forfeiting it when uh, you can't stand anymore. So uh, we, I want to see Akawa step up a bit perhaps on the Winston and make sure that he, a Sire and Saucy really get the space to uh, perform at the highest level here. So we're going to be seeing the LNL defense roll on out here and... We're going to be seeing here again, it is the resurgence of Soldier 76, if you will, where, you know, this is always kind of Soldier stomping grounds, and it, it doesn't really surprise me in the least that suddenly, oh, you've buffed Soldier? Let's bring him back to the cafe. Yeah, and a few people were surprised we're seeing this Orisa comp still, but it is so useful on this point specifically, because, uh, of course, the offensive team has to put some kind of pressure onto the point, uh, but with the space being so good for the defensive team, having the sidelines uh, right below them, onto the point, they can easily dispatch off Akawa and uh, forward here on the D.Va when they come in to contest this point. So Sugar Free, looking to do a lot of work. Saucy's going back. I, I was just oh. going to ask, this, like, do you think Saucy's yeah. going to stand this? And he wants no part of it. <laughs> that was an instant nope goes to the Hanzo. And it makes sense you think about Hanzo's ability to pressure shields. Yeah, exactly. We've seen this composition before, even in the last years as well. It didn't work out quite then. So maybe Saucy can uh, uh, do the composition justice and find a few picks here on the Hanzo. It is a big shift for a player though, going from hit scan and doing quite well in the first series, suddenly having to go to Hanzo. And we're trying to pressure the Orisa here right now. Again, the Orisa staying in the cafe. Nice rocket though coming in. Desire gonna go straight up to 50%, wounding the of opposition, though not getting any pickoffs. Again, pressure from up above. Hawk almost getting D mech the defense and a real rough spot here for LNL, but they are enduring. Dogman with a super early nano boost, kept his team healed up and then some. But you look to Ezire for one good turn, deserves another. About to get barrage. Swept immediately! What a play by Dogman! Absolutely huge. You needed that barrage to find a few picks against this Orisa composition, but instead he's going to go down against Dalton, and suddenly you're in a position where this defensive composition is going to work out. That was so good, Dogman. Gets another sleep! Sleeping the Hanzo, who is about to get right in his face. Saucy, nowhere to go. Picked on off. The Ana carries have been so ridiculously real here today. And again, Dogman was the player who tweeted out the other day that if you want to showcase great amount of skill at a tier 2 level in contenders, you need to hit those sleep doors and those spirit grenades, and he's certainly doing so, so thus far, making a name for himself. Not only was he able to keep his tanks up, but the tanks were very low at some point. It was proven by how early he got the mana. Yeah, deal with the barrage coming in, and now as you go to the next fight, Dalton attack buys already. Sugar Free about to get a tire. Desire down immediately. They're gonna have to burn the resin. Dalton does go. Yep, it's time for a nano visor. Moves on forward. Dragon goes through the cafe, gets nothing, and LNL easily cleaning up. Just easily cleaning up once again. We haven't really seen this Hanzo and Faro composition work out that great throughout the day, and so maybe yeah, there is some doubt lingering in the minds of second win now. Are we going to swap composition? We're seeing Saucy bring out the Junkrat, swapping over to a soldier. You know, they're, they're really wondering what are we going to bring out. Goats does not seem to be the answer, and instead they're going to rely on Akawa uh, to put pressure onto this point. This is the we hate Orisa composition. This is the, you know what, we're going to deal with your shield and then some, but it is going to give a lot of room to Dalton. Yeah, it is going to give a lot of room to Dalton. And Sugar Free has to hit a big rip tire, though, in this fight. And might have the space uh, with Gator on the Orisa. They lost the heart of their healing. Dogman is put down early on the fight. The tire doesn't really do as much as they're looking for. They're investing the nano boost. This is all in, all hands on deck right now for second win. Akala going to the top floor of the cafe, shield down. Forces Dalton away and second win. Ooh, Hawk, able to get the self destruct to the back, gives up his life fourth. Defense coming back in. Dalton reclaims his perch, but Ezire puts him back on down. The Farah over the top and the pressure from second wind starting to blow LNL over. Yeah, and this is just clean up at this point. It was the pick on the Dogman that made the big difference. If you can't heal up all the damage coming in when there is a Junkrat and a far on the field, that's going to render you uh, exposed to all that spam so great pick out the dog man and that's going to allow point a to be capped so we're going to see a lot of spots coming out for both teams sugar free over to that genji and meanwhile saucy over to the tracers to contest the ground a bit more. 
And Trigger Free on Genji is no joke. I mean, we're talking about a player that if Who Are You was Genji number one in contenders last season, Sugar Free would easily be Genji number two. And even then, it's not clear. He simply put LNL over the top in a lot of situations. Already at 36%, the pressure coming in fast and furious. Car card just barely able to live a column. Having to burn the Primal Rage, almost taken down, but he's out. Working on the fire, was able to find Dalton, LNL, feeling pressured a bit back, but again, you look for Sugar Free, already about two thirds towards a blade, but his team's falling all around him, so the blade might be all he gets here. Yeah, but you had to swap away from that Junkrat, and so you've used this fight to build some ultimates. You did use the Nano Boost onto Dalton, who have extended early into the fight, but still, you're giving yourself an opportunity to contest later on in point B with big ultimates coming up, but then again, Second wind with this position on the advantage, holding the chokes with the Farah, it's going to be very rough to get out of these doorsteps. Really like we saw from Sugar Free there. He was able to just suicide dive in, get the last little bit of his blade. Now the blade is up. Not gonna have a nano boost with it, but you know what? Sugar Free's good enough, but usually he doesn't need it though. Under heavy pressure. Barrage coming in from Izar. Doesn't get anything. Slept on down. Here comes the blade. Blood in the water. Sugar Free's a shark. Moving on in. Looking for the woods on top. Though ends up. Not getting what he needs, a little bit out of position. Saucy blows up two in the other end, both supports are down. And suddenly it's second wind coming back over, but Dalton does even things out. Yeah, and you get both of these supports out of the fight. That means Hawk on this diva is going to have a hard time staying alive. Maybe Dalton can make a play together with Gator. Gator gets slept though, and it's all up to Dalton to deal with Diana. He does so, can he get more? Well, this is where Dalton is really at home. Of course, he's a villain right now for LNL, but Tracer was always his home city, so to speak. It's something that he made his name on, the old narrow Dalton combination. Moving on forward, gonna get the DMAC and LNL just punishing Second Wind for being disorganized. They are, and now we're seeing Sugar Free back onto that Doomfist. A lot of punching potential in these walls, and if they can keep diving successfully with Dalton on this Tracer we talked about, and then... Maybe Dogman hitting uh, Biotic Grenades could be a huge boon to upcoming fights. But then again, we see Second Wind dropping back to the McCree and the Brigitte composition. It's, it's exactly what you want to see going up against these heavy dive comps. Dalton's going to be all risk, all reward here. I think you're absolutely right. It's They've swapped to a comp that makes it really rough here for Dalton. But oh, he was looking for the elevator and goes, nope, not the time. He was trying to get that emergency surprise pulse bomb. Not going to be a thing as they see them going to the high ground. Already a pick up on the Hawk. Dalton, 50 HP. Can't rewind it back now. Moving on forward. Drops a pulse bomb. Blows up some boxes, but nothing tangible in the least. And suddenly, LNL uh, looking a bit discombobulated. Both teams are looking very discombobulated. Actually, Sugar Free gets slept and doesn't get a lot of value early on. Now he gets stunned by SIR and is going to get picked off as well. So Ajax using the sound barrier, not getting any value whatsoever. And this looks like a very bad fight for the side of LF. So how big does the change up here make things rough for Dalton? Where, you know, you mentioned in the beginning, but he saw what was going on there and just didn't seem to feel confident going in. And likely for good reasons. Well, it's not really about Dalton. It's more about Gator and... Sugar Free trying to make space for Lawton instead. You have a Doom Fist, you should be able to deal with the Brigitte initially anyway. And it's just uh, the, the, the dive synergy just wasn't there on the side of LNL. And you know, it is uh, new members on the team. You haven't really had the most time to practice with each other. So they're, they're really showing that the synergy just isn't quite there yet. Second wind of looking to punish some weakness here. One minute left. One, maybe two fights remaining. Saucy hiding in the back. Dead eye ready. Pops out. Happy well skulls. Hawk though, not fooled. Immediately goes in. The Reinhardt gonna block. You know, Hawk still gonna get demeked. The dead eye did connect on it. Second wind. First two pickoffs here. The front line of the defense is gone. And Saucy now looking for those dinks. Going to the backhand side. Doesn't find yet. Stuns two. Second wind pushing on forward. Very healthy all the while. This is going to be forcing the defense of LNL back. Dogman picked off. And great limits from both teams staying alive so long into this fight. You build an honor boost and you use apply it onto a siren on this doom phase. He's just going ham into the back line still. Uh, finally, LNL gets some room to breathe. LNL again just really try and bring this back and see how much that room lasts. Now, barrier though, coming down in for second win. Keeping them everyone nice and healthy. Saucy. On the payload, barrier gone. Has to be aware of getting dove on here. Ajax goes over top, stun, not punished here just yet. Akawa down, second win, not worth the front line. Here comes a grab to the back, and this will be a hold by LNL. Sugar Free slamming the door shut, but that was scary for LNL. That was very scary, but it makes a difference. You swap to this Reinhardt and Sarah composition. You're playing GOATs. You get those big ultimates in line, and that's going to make all the difference. It is a bit risky. 
because I have said multiple times throughout the day, you swap to this ghost composition, you don't have any ultimates for the upcoming fights, and you're at a huge disadvantage, but they managed to build them on time, and as such, they managed to put a stop on the second wind switch. Now, let me ask you this here. Uh, we, we do see the phenomenon of a team going with something not goats and then swapping the goats. And as you mentioned, uh, very rightly, it puts them at a disadvantage. Do you, where do you think the line is where a team should just be honest with themselves and be like, you know what? We're actually going to go goats at the beginning. No shame, no otherwise, just goats right away. Or do you think that there is still like merit to trying the non-goats comps early on? Because it is a weird dynamic, right? We, we kind of joke about it, meme about it a little bit, but the reality is, is that you get the situation of, oh, I guess we're going to go goats after failing pretty often. Well, it only really works on very specific points throughout the map. If you start out playing goats, a lot of the time the defense will already be set up and uh, be ready for potential goats compositions coming out. And so it's very difficult to start out with playing goats when you walk out the spawn doors, but then when you get to the final point, it's a very narrow point, a lot of choke points, and so that's where you can really maximize the value out of goats, and it, it's just too good to not swap to in that case, so it really comes down to what point you're playing on and what map you're playing on, but especially on hybrid maps, you know, King's Row, Hollywood, there is a lot of room for goats. Makes sense. But now, take a look here at LNL. It's going to be Sugar Free opening up on the Genji or Izzy. This is like one of those situations where we are see. you going to swap? And no, he's not. And his Genji, I mean, he's one of the few people that can make Genji work quite well regardless of the situation. Yeah, well, dive works for Orisa as well. So I think that LNL are comfortable playing this dive into whatever comes up. But we're going Ooh. to see the Doomfist Sombra engage, and Akawa gets a pick on Dogman early. Yeah, he ends up giving his life for it, though, and I think Dogman might be okay with that trade. LNL goes, yeah, all right, we've dealt with your front line. There's now no front line at all for the defense. It seems like a great opportunity for LNL. Yeah, this is a pretty big opportunity, and I think they're going to speed with in ASAP here. Maybe Salsing can put a stop on it. Gets a good hack onto Gator. That's going to buy vital seconds for the second win defense to regroup with a Kawa back. Kawa able to come back in, but still misses his partner Crime Diva. Not quite back yet. Sugar Free goes to the back. Was looking for those purple supports. Couldn't quite finish them off, but Ezire down doomfist unable to get that crucial trade out and lnl now starting to really turn the screws to second win with momentum here on point a everyone very healthy sugar free again real close to a blade a kawa down and the I dream here has to be take the point and not even have to use the ult and that's exactly what they're gonna do yeah they only have to use this primal rage and that should be enough to really uh, get the this initial point a cast a kawa overextending once again on the winston and it's not going to help second wind at all Dalton doing a good job as well on this Sombra, getting good hacks, enabling his teammates to get this good dive off and Sugar Free knowing his limits, filling this Dragon Blade for the upcoming fight with Dogman's Nono Boost. I mean, the scary thing here is there's so many ways they can make this happen, so many combinations, permutations of the next fight. I mean, what's an ideal fight in terms of alt resources used here? Well, EMP is going to get be hard to use here on the high ground, so just using the Nono Blade could be enough. You get a pick onto the Diva as well, and I think now we're at a point where the Dragon Blade couldn't come out, but they do get the EMP from Saucy, and this might go in second win's favor instead. Yeah, Saucy's able to get the EMP, they take down two, but the falter is entirely there. Fried still ended up getting demacked, he's in a weird spot. LNL respawns are coming back in, but Dogman got picked off. Akawa just rides the line between life and death. Doesn't matter that he's purple, use a primal rage. A lot of disruption coming in, and I feel like it was Akawa here that just bought just enough time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And again, if you're LNL, you're not too worried at this point. You have four minutes to work this point with. You have a lot of ultimates. You have the Nano Blade. You have the MP. Second wind. You know, they took the position of the advantage back using the EMP. But uh, again, I don't think you're too uh, unhappy with the way your ultimate economy is looking for the offensive LNL here. I'm just curious here. To me, it feels like LNL should take the next fight in the blood. It's just a matter of how much do you have to invest here. And Ajax oh. goes down! Went down mid-barrier. No one felt the beat at all. He stumbles. He falls. He's out of the fight. That is the Lucio anti-dream there. The full nightmare, if you will. Sugar Free, though, able to make some lemonade out of lemons. Just dashing through. Picks off two. No blade required. So they might not have gotten the beat, but they're still going to get a bit of progress. Yeah, but still, second win. They're getting a fight out of this. They recognize that LNL has so many ultimates up, but they still get all of these ultimates up. Dogman uses the nano boost. Ajax using the sound barrier. And it's a bit of a brawl, despite the fact that LNL has such a huge advantage in terms of ultimate economy. So Second Wind really using aggression to their favor. And Akawa is just going in repeatedly, applying Ooh. pressure to the backline. 
Dog man hit a nasty sleep on Saucy in the back, followed up by the hack. There is no getting out there for Saucy. They don't have to worry about the EMP at all. And now you think about it, that means Sugar Freeze is going to be able to blade without the worry about not being able to do anything mid blade. This is a window of opportunity for the Dragon Blade, and they're just diving on in, being aggressive, knowing when that can't come in. And they don't use anything, they just buy space. Yep, they have all the ultimates now up for the next fight as well. EMP and Dragon Blade and Primal Rage should be enough here. But then again, second win. They're so good at going aggressive. Akawa, what you're going to do just that? Can they find the fix though? Played out. Sugar Free goes. Gets Car Car. Looking for the Doom Fist Sword to be in the fist this time around. Late self destruct from Pride. And ooh, Akawa just punches Sugar Free. A little bit of uppercut towards the top side of the buildings. And the defense here. Buying an interesting amount of time. Transcendent's gonna come out, and that's really gonna force LNL back. LNL does not get what they need here. And this is where you start. You, you, they felt good about their first attack. Now you start after feeling a little bit more apprehensive. Yeah, now you're a bit worried. And like I talked about in our previous series, watching Second Wind in the past, they were a bit too passive. I did not like it at all, but suddenly they're showing a different side of themselves and they're playing a bit more aggressive. Akawa keeps going in and making it hard for LNL to really execute. So despite the fact that LNL has a non boost up and they have the Primal Rage up. I do expect second win to get a lot of value in this fight. Oh, that was a really nice CP coming from Saucy. You hit the bulk of the enemy team and you see second win more than willing to dive in and take advantage. Saucy has had very good summer play really all day long. However, gets caught up there by Haka the Baby Diva, but Ezire coming right back over. And they say, well, you're hacked, you're down. Sugar Free moving on in, taking advantage of the chaos, picks up two. Can he make it three? Zen gonna fall, and LNL able to turn on a dime there. They take well advantage. Not enough was done off the EMP, and LNL gonna be getting point B. Yeah, finally, you have to say, it was a good defense coming out of second wind, and LNL had to invest a lot of ultimates to really secure that point B. You shouldn't be scared to invest ultimates once you're on the bridge uh, or on the bridge of uh, actually capping a point. So no mistakes on the side of LNL, but still second wind, making sure it's very difficult for the side of LNL. LNL, they have a blade up, but trigger free. You're hacked. You can't quite pull up the blade. Don't ask me how that works. It simply does safety locking mechanism, but the hack is gone. So is sugar free taken down before he could get healed. It is a bit of chaos though between both teams. It's back and forth. LNL actually okay with this, where the payload is for now. Dalton able to back on out. And LNL is getting the better of this. They're getting payload progress, they're getting pickoffs, and they're well situated for the next fight. Much to the credit of GOATS as well. You're still playing the Genji, but you've swapped to the Reinhardt and the Sari as well, so you're making it harder for this dive composition to really sustain for long enough. We're going to see Sugar Free with the Dragon Blade up and Dalton on the edge of getting this EMP up for the final fight. But second win, Sugar going in with the Doomfist, trying to find big. He got hacked early on, but that could work against them. There is a period now, he can blade, doesn't have to worry about getting hacked. But LNL, it wasn't quite what they wanted. The defense right in their face. Nice bubble on the Reinhardt, saves from the Doomfist. These are punished with nothing to show for it. Winston in trouble, two pickoffs. Akawa about to fall, no more rage here. Rages himself right to his doom. And now with three pickoffs, LNL going for the win. Sugar Free diving on in. Nano Blade in progress. Going to deal with the Diva. Gets the two pickoffs needed. Makes it three in the very end. And now it's going to be LNL going right into the apex of Hollywood. There's a bit of delay, but it's not going to be enough. Sugar Free simply too strong at finishing the map. Yeah, four ultimates is going to be enough for LNL to finally cap this point off. And you have to say that both teams play this really well, I think, because LNL... They looked, they looked disciplined and they looked well in their executions, etc. But second wind always made it difficult for them with the aggression coming out of Akawa. He did, in lack of a better word, feed at the start of the game. <laughs> but towards <laughs> the end, I think that Akawa played really well on the Winston and made sure second wind were still in this, despite the fact that LNL looked really good on their side. Well, I fully agree. I think it was a bit of a redemption story for Akawa where, you know, we were both kind of on the same page in the beginning going, you know what? I'm not sure he had his best showing earlier in the day. It was better. Also, again, when I look at the second win roster, I go, what is going well for you guys right now? What are you executing properly? You got to look towards Saucy on yeah. his Sombra, where I wasn't really too impressed by him on the McCree. The McCree wasn't great. But once he gets to Sombra, it's like he's in his best place ever, where he's able to consistently get good hacks, get quality damage off, and more importantly, land EMPs that are not just good, but team fight winning. And it's a real bright spot for second wind, even as they did fall here in this first map. And now, hmm, they're saying Ilios for next map pick. I didn't think Ilios was in the pool of five. It's in the, I feel like 
Yeah, it's in the best of five map pool. So we've given that it's a it best is. of five, we've added a couple of maps to the map pool. Oh, so Helios okay. is introduced into the best of five format. And that's going to be the first map pick on the side of second win. So excited to see what they bring out. A very versatile map with a lot of different points. So a lot of different compositions in one same map. Uh, Ilios has always been uh, one of the most diverse control setups uh, in the entire game, of course, because you think about the, you don't get much of a bigger difference than the well stage where everything's very closed in, uh, sight lines are very poor, and then yep. you go to the ruins where, uh, you know what, it, you tend to get an influx of smug French purple women uh, on that particular point. So it's certainly a control map that tests the versatility of really any team. Although there are some teams that say, you know what, we're on ruins, but we're going to go goats anyways, because goats yeah and that's going to be extra hard for these new teams as well because you haven't practiced that much together but now you have to really show that you know how to play a lot of different comps uh, at the same time so uh, a team like lnl for example or some new members maybe they're not uh, really adapted to playing many different styles so maybe they'll you know opt for a perhaps worse composition in some moments uh, for the sake of better team synergy across the board now, one thing that's a little bit of an interesting twist here where it's always cool to see how the meta develops is that for now, both teams are showing Hammond and it looks like that is going to be the case. It is a hamster v. hamster battle here coming out. And we've seen actually in Australian uh, contenders that we've seen a lot of Hammond on this point uh, in back in Europe and uh, even in America, we're seeing a lot more goats perhaps because of the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, they like playing goats. That's just how it is, but... In Australia, we've seen a lot more Hammond, and maybe they brought it over here for us here today with Gator and Karkar both staying on it. Karkar is going to swap to the Lucio, of course. I got debated CP. I've been, been, yeah. It's just the yep. online tournament, you know. It's it's a curse. I finally, I, I finally, <laughs> I took the bait. The, the, the old debate, and oh, Dalton immediately found Saucy, and they say. I went back to spawn. Uh, that's pretty much after there. Gator gonna swing on in. LNL feeling real confident, be more aggressive. Because guess what? You got the early pickup. You don't have to worry about the Doom Fist. You get the Brigida down immediately. The heart of the setup, absolutely done for second win. And that should be LNL cruising to an easy first point target. Yeah, and you're playing the Widowmaker on Ruins. You mentioned it yourself. An influx of uh, blue French women. Really good at clicking <laughs> heads. And so far, Saucy couldn't really manage to walk forward at all. And uh, get into the face of this LNL composition. So uh, we might actually see some swaps coming out. They're going to stick for the Doomfist and the Genji for now, but that means that LNL are going to have a good read on what's coming up. They're going to be split up and make sure that this dive does not work out for a second wave. They have a very good look at where things are at, but they are positioned in such a way that Dalton is struggling to find good sight lines here. But the upside for LNL is that you don't have to take the fight in there. You can just, you know, you can be scary. You can position it in such a way that you don't get picked off. But eventually, it's on the offense to actually make a turn. And that's the point where Dalton is going to get these opportunities. Looking for the Genji. Isaiah spending all this time looking at Dalton, not doing anything else. Akala just gets plunked in the head. Saucy already down. And LNL, it's firm control right now, John. Oh, absolutely, and now you're just rolling on ultimates. Sugar free with an EMP, and that's an easy cleanup for Dalton and the rest of the team. Dogman's going to use the nano boost for good measure as well, but with Hawk having the self destruct up for the next fight and Ajax getting close to the sound barrier, I don't think you're too worried if you're LNL here. So Saucy is going to swap over to the Tracer. Bit more of a pure dive composition coming out from Second Wind, and given what we've seen from them in the past, dive is what they might be the best at. It wouldn't surprise me, and also, I mean, this is a good time to go with the GT uh, Genji Tracer setup. There's no Brigitte on the other end, at least make them swap. Yep. But uh, it's going to come down to Dalton, I feel like. It's going to come down to Dalton to click these heads, and LNL playing a bit more passive to give Dalton time to hit those. But still, you have a sound barrier, so you can go aggressive. The yeah, Arisire is going to use the Dragon Blade, <laughs> and it gets countered immediately. Yeah, Dalton was able to get away from the Nanoblade. The Nanoblade from Izar actually doing precious little here. Kawa punish. He's trying to make space for Nanoblade, but now the time is over. The blade is gone. The Nano's out of it. Dalton now with Rune to work with once more. Back on top looking for Lucio. Car Car, nowhere to go. Tesla Cannon all over him, and Widow puts him out of his mercy. Izar, that was his moment there, and it didn't happen at all. It didn't really happen. It was negated by the sound barrier of Ajax. So good patience from Ajax, recognizing that the Dragon Blade was coming up. Bit of a back and forth fight and 99% for the LNL. Akawa doing his best to stall this, and now reinforcements are coming. 
Dalton has been on fire the entire time. Saucy finally gets a little bit of revenge the other way, but the old adage goes, it might be too little, too late. I'm gonna fall on the point. And you know what, Widow? You don't wanna be the last one to point. You're gonna have to be that. It's not a great spot. You died to a Lucio. It feels a pretty terrible moment there. And yeah. that's gonna be L and L with a strong opening here in Ruins. Yeah, and we know how control works, CP. You win the first fight. And immediately you have a bit of an advantage when it comes to the ultimates. We saw that they were rolling on the EMPs and the, the tank and support ultimates. And so it's hard for second win to really get back into that game. Especially when you don't have a Widowmaker that's comfortable going up against a player like Dalton, who we know is so good at his kind of heroes. So. But we're going to well. And as we said, very diverse map. So maybe ruins didn't work out for them. But now they don't have to worry about a Widowmaker as much second win. And they have an opportunity <laughs> to tie up the map. Yeah, exactly where I was going to go. So, you know, there is an upside. They don't have to worry about the Widow. Yeah. But they do have to worry about McCree. And if Dalton can bring the same Fiery Den Widow, it's still not going to be easy for them. It's not going to be easy for them. But playing this McCree, they have to go aggressive. They're going to recognize that Sire is playing the Farah for the poke. They do have the Orisa to uh, prevent that damage coming in for them. But that's going to be pushed down by just sheer time. And this Farah using her rockets. Dalton on a flank, trying to find some picks. Not really going to find those yet, just yet. Yeah, he was looking for the tracer. Might want to be more concerned with Farah up to the sky. Obviously, it is a tough choice, but find Saucy anyway. Saucy wasn't paying attention. Karkar super low. Needs one more Peacemaker shot. Farah ends up taking the bullet for it, but does it matter? Gator knocks Pride right into the well. Of course, that halt from Arisa so strong on the stage, and Dalton now on the Kree powered cleanup. Yeah, and it's pretty weird composition to face if you're a second win now as well because you're playing the tracer which is good at diving and dealing with the back line but you're also playing a fara which is a it needs a bit more time to set up the spam coming in etc and so second win with not the most optimal comp especially when you're facing a Makui and a brigitte and really lnl just in another position to really run away with this round in my opinion well, your thing too, the Orisa forces you to position in rough ways because you don't want to get halted right into the pit. Gator is controlling a whole lot of space just by merely existing right now. And they deal the dive quite well. Nana Winston, doesn't really matter. Here comes the Supercharger. Everyone feeling the damage, but the Desire drops Gator and the Supercharger immediately. Found a way to the back. Dalton punishes him, but again, the damage has been done. Sugar Free drops the rally later into the fight. And LNL, they still think they can buy time here at a minimum, but... You know, Diva and Brigida aren't dying here, reinforced, they take down Akawa! Yeah, there's a lack of damage on the side of Second Wind, and so they're really just able to out-sustain and still be in control of this point. Uh, Teletrax coming to come out, doesn't get anything from that, and suddenly it's a bit of a brawl on the point still. Yeah, and this works out well for LNL. The respawns are back in, the window of opportunity for Second Wind completely gone, sugar-free! Just, he doesn't have a back button, he's actually just continually going forward, and is he gonna fall for it? No! Healed up! He rode the line between life and death, ends up living in the end, and Ellen Hell going so deep right now. It's just a uh, forget the life, man. You just uh, do so much healing oh, when you just <laughs> press W, so why not? <laughs> Sugar Free did a great job at pushing forward. <laughs> this woman is holding up the shield and slowly walking towards you. What do you do? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that is what saucy do. doesn't have any room. They get a pick onto Hawk. Five versus six. Can they finally win a point here? Dogman's going to pop the transcendence. And a good a biotic grenade actually coming out from the Haku. Yeah, the bio nade shutting down, the transcendent healing there. Izar able to clean up. And this is looking like the best fight second win this had so far. Certainly they're going to retake here, but 99 to 0. What do you have to do here to turn a round like this around? Well, you have to keep playing aggressive. You can't just let Dalton roam free on this McCree. And so you have to let them in towards the point a bit. And then go aggressive with Akawa and Izar on the far out. I like to see a defense matrix. Uh, Coming in for the Farah here to utilize that barrage to its best potential. But again, we need to see explosive maneuvers coming out of second wind. LNL looking for a way in. Dalton on the side was looking for the mercy, misses the flashbang, and Ezire takes well advantage. Both supports down to a well timed barrage. And okay, Dalton's looking for the. Yeah, he still killed the Farah, anyways, guys. Guys, guys. Eh, killed Ezire. But again, there's no support here. Dalton, though. Still going to use the Deadeye, hoping the Brigida is enough. And actually for LNL, they're getting positioning back on the point. Uh, second win hasn't really been able to take advantage. Self-destruct up. LNL going to position out of the way. Nothing happening there as Dalton continues the pressure on the McCree. Yeah, but you're playing with a handicap here because essentially 
as Zyra was in the spawn the entire time, there's essentially no damage on the side of Second Wind. LNL can just out sustain and let Dalton do work on this McCree. Going to get another pick onto Haku and Dogman popping in his Rasenas, looking very good for LNL. Dalton being surgical here takes down Saucy and LNL protecting the McCree so well here. And Dalton saying, I'm going to reward you for this protection by bodying the rest of the other team. And Dalton. Done enough here. Sound barrier up. It's a victory sound barrier. Yeah. And well enough indeed as LNL gonna be up two to nothing here in this best of five. They're looking really good, CP. This is looking like a team that could, you know, walk away with a victory throughout the entire tournament. Second wind. Uh, going into this tournament, I don't think we ex expected them to walk away with a win in their first match, but you know, this is a strong team, and so you shouldn't really uh, you shouldn't really uh, you know take this win for granted for LNL. They showed up big time here. Uh, with everyone really popping off. Well, the other thing too is that this is such a nice storyline for Dalton right now where, you know, I might be wrong, <laughs> yeah, this, but uh, it, you think about it right now is that Dalton is subbing in for LNL. He's not actually on the yep. main LNL roster. And uh, the reason why he's able to sub in is to the best of my knowledge. And again, I, I could be wrong, but I mean, given the circumstances, it would make sense is that obviously he's not playing with Toronto right now. He's a backup for Toronto. So when you're in backup mode and you're not getting the play time you want to just show your stuff, and you get this unique opportunity to play with another team and not just do well, but dominate. That's so good for Dalton as you're in this formative time where teams are looking. Who do you pick up for the next season contenders? Who's going to bring you to the next level? And it's a good redemption story, too, because Dalton, you know, all fairness, he had a tail off towards the latter end of contender season two. I'd say contender season two really wasn't a great season for Dalton. But if he can play like he's doing here today and just bottle that up. He could have a great season three no matter where he lands, whether it be in Toronto or somewhere else. Yeah, so you can talk about how players, they want to be on academy teams, but Dalton already on academy team. If you can get into a position where you can choose what academy team you want to play for and you can pick what destiny you have yourself, I mean, that's even better for Dalton. So just proving his worth here today for LNL is going to be great for his career moving forward as well. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the shot on the arm you need. Where just There's so many avenues. Uh, I mean, really, not only as players, but as casters. I was just like, if I just had that opportunity to go <laughs> in, let, let, let me show you how this is. Uh, at, at all facets of the esports side, and Dalton is definitely having one of those days. But we are going to be going to our third map here, Reinforced. It's going to be Dorado. And what, what do you think we'll see here in terms of changes? Obviously, second wind, the favorite, a lot of the Farah, a lot of the Sombra. Does this play to their style? Well, it worked out in their last matchup <laughs> when they uh, first point held, of course. So we might see Saucy on back on the Sombra. That's where he really shined overall. As I might opt for the Genji once again. But I'm a bit worried about Dalton popping up on the Widowmaker here because I talked about before. This is a map that really favors snipers. And Dalton, if he keeps playing the way he has this series, <laughs> the way we saw him pop up on Ruins, you know, those uh, blue French ladies might come out once again, CB. No doubt about it. And hey, I mean, you know, going to be seeing more of it uh, overall where, you know, we've just had such a Widowmaker presence that uh, they decided to give France an OWL team. You know, why not? Just yeah. <laughs> going along with the theme of the season, I suppose. But we're hanging the Dorado. Uh, I will say, guys, in case you're wondering, I have retired the entire gimmick of selling out for the America Corporation. I don't know what my next uh, ridiculous gimmick what, what is going to be. But... About? Was that a power company? Yes, I, I... Uh, it's the power it is the power company that runs Dorado. Like, you are going into a Lumerico Co. Co Corporation plant at the very end of Dorado, and they're oh. probably corrupt. I mean, I don't know. That's usually how corporations are built. So I, I just acted as a shill, saying that they only had the best interests of the community in mind, and I, I yeah. played up the idea that they're paying me exorbitant sums of money to improve their reputation. Yeah, for sure. I, I can see that lore being true. For yeah. sure, you know. You know, now when uh, I'm trying to uh, become a caster here on the Beat <laughs> Invitational, I need to learn some more lore and, uh, you know, be as fancy as Mitch Uber Leslie. So perhaps learning more about power companies, and uh, Mondala's goal is the way forward for me, ZP. I mean, you can learn the lore or you could just say Australian words that no one really knows the meaning to, but make it sound really cool. Uh, and, you as know, that also works as well. <laughs> just find, like, the Swedish equivalent. Be right in there. <laughs> Oh no, we're we're not doing Swedish lessons. Not on broadcast. I can tell you about I can tell you about the glory of IKEA, but I cannot teach you Swedish, CP. 
Uh, that's unfortunate. But hey, I mean, Ikea, just, uh, you know, if you actually know the way in Ikea, the, know not to get lost, you're way ahead of the game. To get let, but, let me just tell you this much. I love meatballs, CP. There you go. <laughs> and it's all you're going to be able to eat as you never get out of an Ikea for the rest of your life. Sugar free, though, on the defense here in the Genji. This is highly aggressive coming in from L&L. &L. This is highly aggressive. And earlier, we've seen some aggressive holds here. They're trying to build some ultimate skater, certainly doing so on the Winston. But actually, second wind might capitalize and get a few picks here. But no, it goes the other way around. Sugar free takes expertise on Genji. It's proven over and over again. Sugar free, 41%. Gonna go back, grab a little bit of health, and. Sugar Freeze aggression here. Very few Genjis can make this work in the way that he does. But Dalton gets picked off. That's going to really cool the Jets and Sugar Free as much as he would love to go back in. You don't want to do it in a six on five situation. Oh boy. And Dogman goes down as well. You find an initial pick, and that just gives more room for you to push aggressive and find even more. Ajax and Dogman goes down. And you can see the amount of space that Second Wind are really pressuring now. They just want to go into the spawn. Make sure Sugar Free can't get away. They got to hack onto him. And that means he can't dash out. That's just another big stagger. And they might actually be in a fight here. Six versus five going up against LNL on point eight. Uh, I mean, well, Dalton's out in the middle of nowhere right now. I guess waiting for his team to come back over. Are they even going to get to set or first? No, they're not. They, they didn't nope. really have the opportunity. So Dalton has been eternally setting up here in the back because of how badly LNL has been staggered. Absolutely. And you have to give some credit for second win. They recognize they got a few picks and then just push their advantage. Pound even more. LNL, they need to be a bit more disciplined here now. Ajax gets hacked, and that's never good. And it's going to be an initiation from second win. Double Genji Blades come out. Izar gets two in the back. Both supports out, but Sugar Free does that and more. Yes. Makes it a triple. The Nano Blade Winston combination. Time to beat up a Diva. Sugar Free and Winston can be going in even deeper. Fried sake. Please, God, let me get away. No, can't get back into the spawn before Gator shuts him down. Sugar Free says no more, despite the fact that Zayu went ahead and used his Dragon Blade and got two picks. Sugar Free turned the tide in his favor with a huge Dragon Blade of himself. And I mean, that's just impressive. You're at a disadvantage, and despite that, you just go ahead and show the world how good you are as Genji. Sugar Free just has such clean mechanics in terms of solidifying off a dive, nice right click melee combos. And it's just enabling LNL to be so crazy aggressive and they've completely flipped the momentum of this game. Yeah. We talk a lot about momentum and pace of the game, etc. And this is where Second Wind really has to calm it down, get themselves together, start sli uh, stop slipping up rather, and make sure you get good value from a Devolt or a EMP moving forward. We've seen Saucy on this Sombra throughout the day. He gets another good EMP here. Saucy gets it first EMP, but Dalton gets a second, gets everyone in the back line. I don't know if the fall through was there, but at least buys him a little bit of time. That makes it so that the offense won't be as free to go forward. But Sugar Free gets picked off. Haku was able to fend him off. It means that there's not going to be a Sugar Free blade. And it paves the way for the offense now to get some much needed momentum. Yeah, and this is where Dalton being a stand-in really comes into the picture. His team wasn't ready to capitalize off the EMP. It's unfortunate. Both EMPs were really great on both sides, but then again, Elena or Second Wind rather, come up with the better one, and now they're going to be in a position where it's just one fight remaining, and they're going to cap point B. And point B, I mean, it is a very difficult point to cap. The defense gets quite a bit of room to work with here. We have a blade up of Desire, but LNL with a blade of their own. Sugar Free looking a little bit confused and early. Finds the opposite. Genji wins the blade on blade battle. And Sugar Free just uh, able to back up a bit. But look at how deep the tank went. is right at Akawa. So far in, they take down two. The problem is, no one's really pushing the payload as all this happened. And still, you have the sound barrier up and you have the non boost up. Going to have an EMP soon. Ajax actually got hacked mid-animation for his sound barrier. And so the side of LNL, they just can't contest this. They just can't deal with uh, yeah. second wind right now. Well, you say you can't, but Sugar Free says, I'm going to try anyways. Somehow staying alive with Hawk. They're buying time. Izar, though, is able to get down Gator. Karkar moving forward. Sound barrier at the ready. Izar getting the pickoff needed. And there's just not the punching power to your initial foreboding warning. There was very little that LNL could do. In second win, they're going to get through. And pace of the game has shifted once again. Now second win with the momentum. And they're just going to keep pressuring forward. Akawa is just pressuring in into the spawn together with Salsi on the Sombra, trying to build even more ultimates. You want to make sure now that you're in a position where you have enough ultimates to really keep this momentum going forward. And with Azire having a Dragon Blade up, second win, the good chance to finish it with a huge amount of time on the rudder. 
I mean, this has been unchained momentum, but this is also one of the hardest points in the entire thing you need to get forward on. There's a lot of ultimates up for the defensive end. We'll see what Izar wants to do. He's going to take the initiative, goes forward, Nanoblade up, looking for anything. No, it's a Nano Brigida. There is no stronger terror. Hawkins to self destruct, takes down two. And, uh, man, that, that's what Christmas is canceled, but when you go in as a Genji with Nanoblade, you're feeling great, and then you see a Nano Brigida. That's just, I, I don't even know what you do about that aside from just cry. Uh, it's just. Counter confirmed, CP. We found the answer. <laughs> Just nano break forehead. <laughs> and still, well, there's a lot of time on the clock here for the side of second win. You have the EMP up, and you know that LNL has an EMP himself. So there's going to be some mind games here. Is Dalton or Salty going to get the better one? Saucy starts out the EMP, LNL, they lose Gator immediately as a result, but they're able to barrier after Ajax stayed out of the fray of it. They're able to even things up immediately by getting on Ezar. Dalton moving forward, EMP ready, and LNL not really doing too cool. Went a little bit deep, Sugar Free Falls. They don't have the Brigida anymore, and Dalton doesn't feel comfortable dropping the EMP here from the looks of it. Probably wants to wait. Not really in the best position to utilize it right now. We're seeing four people stacked up on the payload. This could be the go time. Dalton coming in, going to use the EMP here. And you're going to see a wild fight. Right to the back, gets saucy, but oh, they don't get the Lucio. Car car drops the barrier, negating a lot of the impact of that EMP. The offense wanting to make this fight theirs, wanting to put this one in the bag, but Akawa a little bit deep. Dalton able to get him. LNL now rotating back the other way. The barrier long gone. And LNL with an advantage. Lucio gets hacked. Not going to be able to get out of that one. And LNL easily coming back over. Dalton with the cleanup. And they've thrown second wind back. So you're on the back foot as second win right now, but you have a lot of ultimates coming up. Previously, I was going to argue that perhaps you wanted to swap to the Brigitte to make sure Dalton wasn't getting too much value anymore. But now, with LNL having to use a lot of ultimates and actually getting pressured by being very forward, this is quite unnecessary, I have to say, pressuring the spawn of second win. Yeah, that, that seems like a little bit over aggro. Dalton, though, Nice aggro there. Goes on the D.Va, builds up an EMP. He's going to have it for the next fight, and it's going to be an EMP battle once more. It is going to be an EMP battle, sorry, with the Nano Blade as well. This is in the favor of second win, but Dalton gets a huge EMP, actually. Yeah, the EMP sets the tone. Saucy dropping EMP of his own, but it wasn't anywhere near as impactful. Hack coming on the Ezire, not getting anything off the Nano Blade. What a swing! Coming in here, speaking of swings, Gator top it on in. He's bad, swings for the fences, and LNL going to take the fight with ease. One final opportunity left here for the offensive second win. And we finally see the Brigitte coming out. They just cannot deal with last night leftovers. High tempo and high pace with this game. And so second win, going to swap over to the Brigitte. Saucy, away from his comfort pick in Sombra. We're going to see the McCree as well, but this is just an opportunity to bring some more uh, momentum into the game. But Gator recognizes that and going to swap to the Reinhardt. Reinhardt's going to be so useful in dealing with this Brigitte. Gotta love the heads up gameplay from LNL. The intelligence coming in here in the moment. Dalton getting and really close to another EMP, just building it up on the other side. 60%. Gator moving forward, rally backing up. It's a whole lot of armor. Kawa slept, goes for the pin. Is getting, oh, he gets blown up. He was worried about the pin, wasn't looking at the Diva. Reinhardt out of play here. Still hope for second win in overtime. Pride gonna pick down two. Some momentum now very much on the second win side. And you take a look towards LNL. They're getting thrown back. Dalton desperately trying to build up that EMP before time is lost, but he's under pressure. Winston right in his face. Is he gonna get away? 13 HP! Got away, but still taken down by Lucio. And now it's getting down to the wire. LNL, random Doomfist. Down he goes. The second we're gonna do it. They're so close. The Nona Boost on Gator, that could be the turning key, but Sire gets a huge high noon as well and picks up Ajax, and that's just going to be a second win. Complete the point when we really didn't expect them to be able to do so at all. Oof. That was just a huge turn of events. The funniest thing is that Dalton almost got free. He put himself in a bad spot, somehow lived with the Winston on him for the longest time. And you know what does him in? Lucio spam at the very end. <laughs> that, 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 that's that's what finishes him off of all things. It's like, ah, uh, you were so close, but you yeah. were so far. Well, it's it's relatively easy to catch a Sombra once she's exposed, right? Because she uses her translocator, and if you're chasing her, you can see where she's throwing it, right? So the Winston has a good time of just jumping after a Dalton in that uh, Dalton in that scenario, and then he eventually gets picked off and. You're not able to get those big EMPs off, and suddenly, second wind 
you know, with a decent chance to actually pick or winning Dorado here and maybe turning the title of the series. Very well could be the case, of course, if you're just tuning in. Uh, there is a two to nothing advantage right now for LNL. Uh, LNL has been quite composed throughout this entire series, but second win certainly has had moments where they have been challenging and doing well themselves. So uh, it is a series that has been very back and forth, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, they've shown that they can play this Sombra Genji comp uh, to a very high level. It's just a matter of perhaps spreading that skill out and learning how to play Ghost properly or bring McCree properly and really being able to match in all of these uh, uh, back and forth or the compositions we see over and over again. So a great play from Saucy and Asire on this Genji and Sombra so far, but it's going to be hard for them to keep it up throughout the series and not be countered at some point. Well, the other problem is too, is that on the defense, uh, dealing with Genji and Nanoblades can be that much harder when you're just looking for decisive fights. And Sugar Free is Genji, of course, very top notch, going immediately, almost able to post Saucy. Saucy gonna fall, Dalton, finishing what was started up above. Sugar Free already at 35%, moving forward. And LNL getting a lot of good stagger here as Akala falls. Yeah, and now again, you're in a position where LNL can just push forward and get even more picks. They're going to opt not to. We're playing the safe game here. They don't really have any ultimates coming up though, so I am questioning this a bit. Sugar Free has to dash back, and that's bad because now you don't have the option to engage for another five to six seconds. Well, the time is about to be ripe here. Seventy-six percent gets in a little bit low off the damage from afar. Now ninety percent. He's got to be thinking blade at the moment. Dogman close having nano, but Gator falls. Ends up getting hacked, taken down on the front lines. That's going to delay LNL here, or so you would think. Yes, that's going to delay them for quite a bit. You have the nano blade up for the next fight as well as uh, Mercy's Valkyrie, but then again, you have the Transcendus up on the defensive side of second win, so. It's going to be an ultimate battle. Can you set up your ultimates properly? And that might be the key to victory. Well, here comes Sugar Free moving on in. Dogman's down! No nano boost applied in the least. That would make people real sad. It was Rob420 in the back. Sugar Free unable to do anything because of the lack of nano boost. And that's all because Ezire was able to pick off Dogman early. What a great timing window for the defense there. Yeah, it's great timing from second wind. And we saw them earlier in the day. Playing Dorado and having a great first point hole and with two minutes remaining, despite the fact that LNL has a lot of ultimates on their side, we've seen a lot of aggressive play coming out of second wind and Saucy with the EMP has potential to do so over again. Yeah, they drop the MP and they're immediately going to look for the tanks. I think their goal there was try and deal with immediately, but they're not able to do it. Dalton now turns the other way, drops the MP. The counter turn from LNL, swift, decisive. It's going to result in three down immediately, make it four. And that's all that LNL needs to get this first point in the courtyard. But it was rough. We've said it in the past that a two minutes hold on point A generally is pretty decent on these payload maps. So uh, you have to give some credit for second win for still showing that they can fight the Sombra and Genji composition. And actually, Karkar gets picked off here by Hawk, and that's going to set them back a couple of more extra seconds. But might as well build a few more ultimates before your next engage. And they still have a long way to go here. Getting through second on Dorado is no easy task. They have the time, but you still have to get the momentum. And see what LNL can do here. They do have the blade in reserve. They do have the blade in the reserve, but it is going to come down to second wind if they can use this their blade to the advantage. But instead, LNL on aggression. You get Ease Iron Saucy down immediately. Sugar Free might have given up his life mid blade, but that's going to be more than enough for LNL to get serious payload progress here as Hawk continues to clean up in the back. This is making it a one fight margin now for point B. Yeah, it's a one fight remaining, but then again, second win, they have a lot of ultimates now for this final fight. We just need them to play a bit more patient, use a bit more discipline to actually get a good, clean engage off now. There's no defensive ultimates on the side of uh, LNL, so Isaiah is going to have free roam in securing some Dragon Blade kills. It's going to be the story of Izar, where he's been a little bit inconsistent. He needs to be consistent here. Dives in, Nanoblade looking for Dogman. Gets him immediately. Looking for Mercy. He's going to be able to get it under pressure by Sugar Free. And a baby Divan Hawk. Izar suddenly going, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean the juice is gone? He's down, Sugar Free. Able to punish. But Ellen Hell has been pretty heavily disrupted here. You need to dominate to take point B. And they're not really there yet. They lost quite a bit in that engage. But this is still an opportunity for LNL to engage because Azir is not in the fight, so uh, Second Wind can't really capitalize off the EMP. 
We are going to see both teams try to set up properly. LNL wants to capitalize on Dalton's EMP. So it's going to be a mind game war. Chicken free. Trying to move on in. EMP gonna get dropped by Saucy. But I don't think it was the greatest of EMPs. LNL mostly able to shrug it off. Gator making disruptions back. Likely gonna give his life for it and does. But the rest of LNL coming in hot, looking for an opportunity. But the problem is they're not able to get a pick off from Gator's face. The entirety of second wind is crashing down upon them. And LNL, I'm not sure what they can do here. Sugar Reef falls, and that's going to spell an end. Yeah, you have to utilize the flanks a bit more here. Dalton using a very aggressive EMP, and then Gator not really ready to capitalize and help him out finishing these kills. So, lack of synergy definitely showing here. I would like to see Gator perhaps go for a bit of a flank, have an easier time reaching Karkar and Haku, the backline of second wind. But instead, they're going to rely on Nano Boost and Self Destruct in this fight to, put, to cap point speed. And this Nano Boost alone could be enough. They're going to go on Akawa immediately. Akawa being the vanguard, pushing LNL back. Fry still hanging on to it. And you see both supports fending off Sugar Free in the back, dealing with the Tracer pressure. Dalton out of the fight early. Kawa giving up his life, went pretty deep after the nano boost. Five on five here. Second win, not out of the woods here yet. Zikar trying to heal the diva. Self destruct coming up from Fried. Is he going to be able to remax safely? He does. Haku out of the fight. And this is just a long, protracted fight that's good for the defense here. The offense isn't getting what they need. It has to be something more decisive. Izar takes down Ajax. Yeah, and that just leaves uh, uh -oh. some time for second win to start capitalizing. Okay, they are going to contest the point. Haku even pops the transcendence, being worried that uh, Sugar they're free. going to hold this point B. But oh well, Sugar EMP for good measure. There. Yeah, Sugar Free is just putting on so much pressure. Basically, out of nowhere, is able to flip that back in what was a longer protracted fight that was in favor of second win. Sugar Free side, you know, going a little bit deeper. LNL still in it, but they only have a minute 45 reinforcement. That's not long at this point, but the stagger comes in. Yeah, it's a good stagger, but they are playing the Tracer and the Sombra composition. Uh, not the best composition, certainly, uh, on this uh, final point C, but I mean, if second win doesn't want to swap to Abrigette, that leave some room for LNL to actually cap this point out especially when you have the primal rage up you have the nonibus coming up and but you're going to get the EMP nice sound bear from Ajax right after the EMP limits the impact of it even though Saucy hit quite a few he didn't get the Lucio and that's a real problem LNL still at full strength Ajax able to shake the pressure nano boost has been invested it was Gator on it diving in looking for Izar ends up getting stuck by primal rages just to be sure, finishes off Ezire, chases down the Tracer. Man advantage to LNL, and look at the disruption to the Sports Gator. Trying to knock him into his team. Deep trouble for Zen, but he's able to stay alive. Haku, healed up by Karkar, just in the nick of time, and Sugar Free fighting back. And this is just a back and forth fight. Both teams using a lot of ultimates to try and secure this one. It seems like LNL might get away with it, but then again, Karkar and Haku are coming back for the side of second wind. Maybe utilizing that biotic grenade and uh, the Discord orb. Akawa's going to get nano boosted and just going to clean up from on here. Yeah, both supports falling. Dogman Ajax out. That's going to be a full reset. And we're down to the final 20 seconds. Dalton's got to have the EMP of the gods here. Yep. And you know that Dalton has that EMP, so it's going to be on Haku to try and hide and make sure he does not get EMP'd. Can't Ooh. use that transcendence for his uh, team here, second so wind. But Dalton is going to spot him out on the high ground. This could be a good fight for LNL. It's a reaction time test for Haku. Can you hit Transcendence before? Oh! He got Dalton! Randomly was looking for it! Hits him with the arm! Dalton goes down! There is no EMP! What game sense from Haku! Great stuff coming in! Able to transcend now. They're not out of it here just yet. But the EMP was a big part of LNL making this happen. Gator gonna fall. Hawk. The last remaining front line here for the offense of LNL. Sugar Free gonna get the beat, drops the rally. LNL feeling real tank here. Sugar Free holding for it. Haku's down. LNL Dalton making something back. out of nothing right now. Dalton is back uh, with the Sombra as well, so they can get an EMP out. And Hawk is just cleaning up. This is still, LNL are still in it. LNL not down yet. What was once a curse could be a blessing because now they have an EMP. Oh, Dalton gets tagged. He can't stand stealth if his life depends on it. The supports are out for blood. Sombra no blood, as it turns Saucy out. Saucy has to use the rally here for the armor. You're going to get EMP. You will have a low health, but the rally is so important here. And they just use the only EMP in the Winston. They're trying to deal with Akawa. Akawa, though, was he able to shake the pressure? Diva certainly wasn't. 
Dalton coming back in. It was the highest value EMP, but they just want to deal with the tanks here. Kawa, though, still alive. Saucy going to fall. LNL with momentum might be pulling this back. Sugar Free, though, is down. They don't have to forget it here anymore. The defense now starting to take advantage of the closest spawns. Gator's going to fall. LNL's final surge starting to fall short. And the defense of second wind holds. We're going to a map four. That, that was... That was one hell of a last point right there. You know, you didn't expect LNL to get back into it, but Dalton comes back with the EMP. Suddenly you're you're in a you have a better ultimate economy, but then the rally comes out, provides a lot of armor when you're exposed. I mean it was just a back and forth and despite the fact that Sugar Free had amazing plays throughout second wind, really just bring it back and they're still in it. Still in it and also again able to challenge and finally bloody one of what appears to be the favorites to take it all right now lnl has been playing really well but second wind found a way through and again i gotta give props there to haku and also just the support of car car where they were yeah. not making dalton's life easy where you know what happens at the first engage dalton hit out by a random orb just completely decimated before even being able to drop the emp next fight could have had a really good EMP to set things up. And what happens? Gets hit by the Biomade, forcing him to delay. And it wasn't even that Dalton was playing bad here. It's just the game sense from the supports for Second Wind was yeah. so good in the moment. But now, we do know our next map. It's going to be Li Zhang. And certainly, it's going to be something that try we'll try to play up to the raw mechanical talent of some of these LNL players. Absolutely. Gator... You know, they were asked, what map do you want, you know, what's, what's is your pick? And Gator immediately responded with Li Jiang. So I think he's very excited to bring out the Reinhardt. You know, I don't, I don't want to make a prediction, but Gator and Reinhardt, it just goes well together. It's like a, uh, it's a great duo overall. I, I think name you're living vicariously. Uh, it's hard to name, but I'm going to say, I'm going to call you out. I think you're vicar vicariously living through Gator right now. It's like, you know, if I was in this match, I'd want to go Ryan. Bring me yeah. to the ride map. I, I Just let me live my life. Don't make me go Winston. I want to be a burly German man. Charge into some people. Drop some hammers. Exactly. You know, that that's those are the feel-good moments. You can get some good primal rages. You can get some good boops. Certainly very hype, but it is all about the big slams. My man <laughs> Emong would know. Uh, but it's all up to Gator now on this Reinhardt to get a win here and move on onto the upper bracket finals. And for LNL, of course, it would be a big statement for them, where again, you know, the kind of bring it all full circle for LNL, their story has been a team on the rise all year long, where they really did shock a lot of people with how well they did in Contender Season 2. Clearly, they've made some roster upgrades along the way here, and uh, they've been looking quite good here so far. And bear in mind, I, it is worth noting, this isn't LNL's final form, right? Where even though Dalton, I think, has been playing quite well today, Dalton is not someone who has practiced or played with LNL, <laughs> all throughout so they can get to the upper bracket finals and they're running with a player that they had no experience or scrim time with beforehand it says a lot about the rest of the team and also exactly a lot about and a lot of, yeah a lot about <laughs> well. on both sides really <laughs> it will be interesting if they play toronto esports later on in the tournament but uh, <laughs> maybe you know we, they're all competitors they're all winners here so dalton would probably like to you know give <laughs> toronto esports the old booting but uh, yeah, it, it would be fun to see. Uh, I don't, rules wise, I think it would depend on how he want to do it. But if Dalton was allowed to come back to Toronto Esports, I can't think of a more WWE like heel face. It's like, my God, that's Dalton's music. Dalton, who helped LNL get to the finals, is now oh God. getting. He's Bring now in beating Golden LNL. Boy. Bring in Golden Boy <laughs> for the wrestling memes. Uh, we, we need that. We need Dal Golden Boy with the steel chair and, you know, whatever targets. If, if he's a bear. We, we Man, I like talking about the idea of Golden. This is, this is a brutal. <laughs> uh, either way, we're getting into it, and LNL, they're goading it up here. It's Gator's home territory, and they're going to immediately go to the point. Yeah, and actually, LNL are opting for a Moira here, which means they need to be a way more aggressive. Meanwhile, Haku and the Senyata, they can afford to buy some time here second win, utilizing the Discord Orb to get some more spam. But I want to see LNL go aggressive here with the Moira and go get a good push. They're going to have to because, especially if Bionate is on cooldown, that's their time to shine. You don't want to wait for a period where Moira's healing is down. But Dogman already going to pop the Colossus, pops it early. Here comes the beam and here comes the pressure. LNL moving forward. Gator saying, I like this moving forward. 
goes forward, gets the Zarya's shield, car card down, and LNL. You gotta think they wanna go forward even more. They already have control of the point, and now it's all about the cleanup. Yeah, so they build that coalescence, and that's just going to be enough sustain for this LNL team. It's a bit worrying, you know, because either you run out of uh, juice with the Moira, and you can't build that coalescence enough, or your team just takes so much damage, so you get that coalescence up in time to really. Uh, step up the pace of the fights themselves, and Dogman just does, does just that, and does as so such. LNL caps the point up to 31% already, and now with the their second winner just going in. Well, it's gonna be barrier v barrier, but second win they have an ace in the hole. That's gonna be the transcends. They use it here versus the grab, but here comes the self destruct. Still takes down two LNL. They don't care about the transcends. Just pull them all up in one shot. Hawk certainly making that happen there and that's gonna be lnl taking advantage winning the ultimate showdown and solidifying their edge here on the night market yep yeah gator knows it best right yeah he, he has the experience from goats and <laughs> now we're seeing a bit of a flank this is oh. interesting this is exciting cp this is what i live for I love this. The secret agent Reinhardt turned the car oh! off the hammer. Oh boy. Knocks down two. Goes for the pin. Gets interrupted midway through. And actually, no pickoffs here. LNL might not be going their way. Self destruct back on over. LNL barely able to sustain. And what was the crazy ambush play? The ambushers because of the ambush ease. That hey, is oh. what a turnaround for second win. Yeah, I could never do that wordplay. Uh, that was too intense for a Swedish, uh, Swedish main tank. So um, I'll just stick to analyzing instead. <laughs> and well, Akawa, yeah, Akawa managed to react in time to Gator's hiding shatter, and that's what she's going to counter charge a, uh, Gator in time. And it's a good turnaround for a second wind. And now they're up, pressuring this choke point. Sugar free moving forward. Grab ready. Connects. Picks up two. Self destruct to the other end. LNL using the tank ultimates to get right back on over. The ambush might not have been in their favor, but the fall through here on the second attempt, still pretty well. They dropped the beat, they want to be sure. Kawa melted on down, sugar free, 100 energy. This man is going through the D.Va armor like it is butter. And that's gonna be LNL retaking the point with not much time left for their opposition. Well, we know that hammers crush butters really well, CP, <laughs> so great wordplay there as well. It's an early sound barrier. <laughs> Not a lot of value coming in from second win, but they're doing a last ditch effort attempt to get this point. They're going back on in, it's not over yet. They have a grab of their own. They're gonna rally, send up the armor, bring in the grab. Saucy holding on to it for now. Might not even have to use it. Second win, true to their name, and they get one in the end. And now this grab could be key to momentum. It could be key to the momentum as well. You're going to hold these choke points and you will catch them in the graviton as LNL are walking through it. Now we have a Doomfist in play as well. No D.Va, which means a lot of burst damage to deal with Moira's high healing output. Grab coming in from Saucy. Everyone going together. No one can see anything. It's grab on grab, but yet Sugar Free ends up falling, blows himself up. Second wind, pushing this right to the spawn. There's no back button. Is Defran in this team? You might think so. Second wind able to push right on forward, and it's gonna be LNL down to their final opportunity. Oh, this is a nice change of pace, right? Oh, it's a huge slam! Ooh, what a play coming on in is LNL. Hawk moving forward. The takes take the way. Rally to me, says Dalton. They're moving on forward. Three pickoffs for LNL. Heading right back on over. They just need a little bit more. Point heading in their favor. 99 to 90. But now it's LNL. They're going to retake control. And it's pure desperation for second win. It's pure desperation, they're getting back onto the Tracers, trying to contest this point, but I mean, they're such an advantage now for LNL, there's no way this can, they can turn it around at this point. LNL solidifying their control, the Night Market, it's theirs, and they're one round away from getting to that upper bracket final. Yeah, so they're proving once again that they are, they are smart players indeed. It's Dogman starting out on the Moira and manages to build that coalescence in time. To really turn the tide of the first fight. After that, he swaps to the Senyata as well to start using the Discord Orb. So it's smart, smart adaptation coming out from Dogman on the flex support role, adapting to whatever second wind is bringing out, and just making sure his team is always on top and in charge of uh, dictating the pace of the game. So Dogman uh, gonna be swapping back to the Ana. 
Uh, again, kind of showing that flexibility where you know, I'll go to whatever is needed. Might be his mantra here. Sugar Free to the Genji. And Sugar Free definitely likes bringing up the Genji in a lot of situations where, you know, not everyone run it, but he does make it work. So this is interesting. We're seeing Hanzo and Brigitte from second win. This is going to be all about spamming out Gator uh, as well as Hawk on the tanks because Hanzo has so much tank output. Let's see if they can get some picks here. Sugar Free under pressure takes an arrow right to the gut. Ezai on target. Absolute domination coming in from second win. They take the fight with ease. It's going to be first control to them. Yeah, so it's a nice change of pace, right? Because generally you see the Brigitte Macri. It's great to shut down divers, but you add a Hanzo into the mix and you're just so efficient at dealing with tanks. And Gator was just not prepared for that. Gets picked early as well as Hawk. Now you get control of the first fight. So, and they're going to swap to Goats though. They recognize that they have better brawl. <laughs> this is going to be rough. Gator, swapping the Goats. Name a more iconic duo. And now you see Ezire built up the Dragon right down Broad Street. Time to move. And there's no easy way of getting out there. The Dragon just simply plays too well. Positioning too poor for LNL. Well done by Ezire. Yeah, it is actually very well done. And in a fight where they shouldn't really get away with winning this fight, they are. And it's looking a bit rough for LNL finally. Of course, only 35% capped for the side of second wind. You know, the, ma the round is definitely not over by any stretch of the imagination and you're starting to get some ultimates up on the side of LNL but now you're really making a case for you know winning this round and going to a third round. self destruct comes out here from the defense. Uh, LNL was able to deal with it. This could be the start of a tournament. Dogman. Nice bionade. Gonna keep everyone nice and alive. Gonna miss the sleep dart. But oh! Goes to the side. Tags Ajax who is already pretty low. That was a flick reaction deal if there ever was one. Sugar Free moving on in, 50% energy. Gonna get real close to a grab here. Would love to use this fight. Another dragon right down Broad Street, but this time LNL prepared. Not gonna be taking much of a damage. L Sugar Free, grab up, moving in. It's just Saucy, and Saucy going, please help. There is no help. Gator just helps her to the respawn. And yet, he's higher off the flank, picks off two. More of a brawl than LNL would like for all the dinero that they've spent here on this point. There's just so much disruption from this second win composition. So they're attacking the back line and Gator at once, and the picks just keep raining in on the side of second wind. Up to 85%. This is going to be the last fight. LNL has to win this one. LNL in a must-win situation. Trying to do just that. Sugar Free at 100%. He's more DPS than tank at this point. Just going for the enemy tanks. Looking to melt them down. Already almost has another grab here. Bear in mind, he started the fight with a grab. Going to be 81% towards another. And LNL mercifully will be retaking the point, but they have a long way to go. They have a very long way to go. But they do start out with a lot of ultimates on this long road. Uh, so they're going to have Gators, Earth Shatter, as well as the self destruct Trigger Free. It's going to have that Graviton Surge at your disposal. And of course, Second Wind knows this. So going into this fight, I'd like to just make sure that LNL wastes a lot of ultimates. Perhaps go take a bit of a dry fight. Let's we'll see what they offer. for. Let's we'll see just how they plan it. Of course, the Graviton probably on the menu. Early Earth Shatter, though. And with three pickups, Sugar Free gets to put that money back in the bank. Doesn't need to use the grab here at all. And LNL, well on their way, where we talk about the alt economy side. That was a big boon to it right there. Yeah, and I think Akawa saw an opportunity to turn the fight. Big Earth Shatter, but if he could get the knockoff of Gator and prevent his team from dying, that could have been a winnable fight, but it ends up not being so. And now they're going to try to take this fight anyway. Grab in the classic Li Zhang spot. Sometimes it drops people right off the edge. And Hawk gonna drop the self-destruct over the top just to be sure. Takes down another two. A lot invested there by LNL, but they're still in a very good spot here, reinforced. 40% left yeah. to go. And they're up to 63% now when we were at that point where it looked like second wind was gonna run away with it. Uh, they're going to swap to the Doomfist and the Farah. A bit more obvious counter picks versus uh, Ghost composition, but they don't have any ultimate charge on those two DPS heroes. So it's going to be a rough final fight on this uh, Garden stage. Especially when Dalton here can just open up with the rally, give people armor, let them move on in. LNL's in a really good spot here. Self-destruct coming in for pride doesn't really do much of anything sugar free again so charged up it's like adding extra damage character to the team you can see the barrier come in here last gasp here for second win lnl they've almost fought their way right back in almost fought their way back to the grand finals they're desperately trying to move in Graviton sugar free has built up another grab mid fight waiting for his opportunity Ezire is down drops the grab picks up doomfist doomfist out 
Diva, D-Max, Fried, God, Mercy, out! LNL has brought this back. They're going to be going to that upper bracket final. And I just can't believe they got away with reverse sweeping this garden stage because second wind looked so good. All credit where credit is due, of course, but bringing it back, we didn't really expect it. But GOATS, GOATS <laughs> is so good, CP. It's so <laughs> damn good. It keeps just winning snaps. And who would have thought that the prime goat, the goat prime, as it were, would be some form of alligator in Gator. So Gator going to his tried and true. And, you know, if you want an ace in your hole to run these triple take compositions, I got to say, Gator is a good pickup here. And we saw it where they were able to make it work in a situation that, frankly, is not really that ideal as you had brought up. But they yeah. still just played it so well that it didn't matter in the end. Well, second wind, we're sticking uh, on the Hanso for a bit too long, I'd like to believe. Uh, they didn't have the far end of Doomfist in time to build those ultimates. So, uh, uh, you know, they could have made some quicker adaptations to the Goat's composition, and they had such a huge advantage. So that, of course, shouldn't have happened um, when you're playing at this level. But credit to LNL for uh, utilizing their ultimates well, and, uh, you know, it's a Hawk getting some good self-destruct as well. This is a shout-out, so... Uh, great play from both teams, really. It was really close. Yeah, it was a joy to watch, but you know what? We got some replays here. Good old sugar free. Yeah. And you can talk out over and... those CP as I increase <laughs> yes. the brightness on my camera. Yeah, see, we're the opposite ends. My monitor is so bright that it's like illuminating my room as if I had lights on, which I don't really. But you know what? Uh, why not look like a ghost, I suppose? Uh, pure brightness. Uh, God only knows what's doing to my eyes. But speaking of brightness, Dalton was super good here on the Widowmaker. Definitely a standout moment where, again, he's not even on the main LNL roster. He's just subbing in, but he had one heck of an Ilios. Well, it's just such a big boon to this LNL. We talked about how he's just standing and he's lacking synergy, but he just has so much firepower. He just adds to the squad, so you always have to be aware of him. And then when you have Gator making room and hitting Shatters, you know, it, it, there's so many threats to deal with at once, and it's just so hard to play versus these well-rounded all-around teams. You know, I love how we have that replay there of him going for the flanking Earth Shatter. It's like, oh man, that was really good Shatter. I mean, the Shatter itself was good. We don't go to the part where the fall through where they actually lose that fight. It's like, uh, but the, the, the Shatter, that was good. Yeah, the Shatter was good. So, second wind, they go down to the lower bracket. They still have an opportunity to climb their way back. And uh, it is an exciting team because we talked a lot about Saucy on that Sombra. I certainly liked watching this team. Akawa started out a bit rough, in my opinion. Um, he didn't have the the most crisp and disciplined uh, playstyle, but he clawed his way back into it as well and proved to have a lot of good initiations and primal rages. And so this team is really, you know, uh, leaving a mark on me and making me feel impressed. Yeah. So, you know, hoping to see what they can bring in the lower bracket. No doubt. It's certainly an improvement for the last time we saw him. But guys, in case you're wondering, wow, it's been a lot of good Overwatch here today. Uh, surely that's all. No, no, no. We have one more match left here today. It's going to be Toronto Esports taking on Phase 2. We'll see if Coach Michael can do it again right after the break.